Good morning, country hobbyists. Today, I've been teasing this for a few days. I am taking a road trip. Mostly for me, but a little bit for you guys as well. We are heading to Newton, New Jersey to make maple syrup. <clears throat> Got the truck loaded up. I got the coffee loaded up and we are about to head off. Okay, so made it over here and uh, went and grabbed some pizza because you know. We're on the East Coast, you have to have pizza. And um, we're gonna unload a little bit of this firewood I brought. I'm gonna surprise John with it. And uh, I'll see if I can get a setup or a shot of his, this evaporator boil, but um, tomorrow we're gonna try to boil down some sap here in New Jersey, so it should be fun. So generally, I'm not this way. This weather's bullshit. It's cold. It was warm at home. Like getting into the 50s. It's like 22 right now. Stupid cold. <sighs> All right. So it was too dark to get any video last night. Uh, so I thought we would capture this this morning. So here is our evaporator setup for the next couple days. This is a barrel stove with some, I uh, think those are eight inch steam table tray pans that you would see uh, like at a restaurant or whatever, a buffet. And we're just kind of getting it warmed up here this morning. So the, the goal of this, unlike that other my pan at home which is a continuous flow this is a uh, we start with sap in this front pan here and we go to uh, syrup in the back so it takes ladling as the back pan um, comes down uh, as the back pan gets lower we move from the front to the back um, there's a fire in here just like on the other one hit the bottom of the pan directly uh, it'll work we'll get this thing up to speed here temperature here and get some boil going we probably have 50 gallons or so of sap to work through um, so we gotta get a boil on gotta reduce that down with the RO maybe get to 20 gallons or 30 gallons if we get to 30 gallons that's a big decrease in the number of hours that this thing has to boil so um, we're getting there. Get going here. It's about 8 a.m. first thing in the morning. I come out and put some wood on it to get it going earlier and warmed up, but walk back in because it was coffee 30 still. But we should have some syrup here before too awful long. Uh, starting to get the propane finisher out too, so we'll uh, capture some of that. I also wanted to point out, like, there's still a lot of snow. We were out of snow. Now we're back into snow. And it snowed last night. My truck had snow on it this morning. Ugh. Ready for spring. We're getting close here, but we're, we're about there at home. But it's getting closer here. But hey, we're making syrup in New Jersey. So that's a, that's a fun springtime thing, right? So I want to take a minute and talk about like the RO. Even though I... I think I'm really bleached out here on the camera. Uh, I want to I want to take a second and talk a little bit about the importance that I think in the RO, especially in these smaller systems with the slower setup. Um, you know, the couple of gallons per hour burn on that, maybe three, if we're really cranking it, and and uh, 
the homemade why it makes sense is that when we had 50 gallons of, of sap to work through and what we've got going here is uh, just already um, I've got about 15 gallons of water pulled off of that so far and I still have uh, I don't know 10 to 12 gallons we've we've had to put some into the boiling system because it's been boiling down but the amount of time that we've saved just by running through this RO has been uh, well think about it you know if it was two gallons an hour and I had 15 gallons and it's seven hours of boil time that we just saved and so I think it's important to note that you know um, that's just taking uh, just water that you don't have to boil completely off the system and um, turn it into just clean water that you can clean with or get rid of heck if you wanted to you could drink it uh, I don't think it's got much nutritional value but you definitely could drink it if you thought you, that was what you want to do it's clean very clean water through there um, you know, just being able to process it is pretty fantastic I mean if we look here if we look here you know that bucket there is full of water uh, this bucket here is sap this bucket here this tube here keeps wanting to cause me problems but that's that's water drained off and then that yellow that's condensed sap and it's coming out about five percent or so I don't have it torqued down um, you know, and you could do these off of two membranes. I've got four here, but even going two, you think about it, you know, if you can take your sap from 2% to 4%, that's taking half your water out. So if you had 100 gallons, you went from 2% to 4%, that's 50 gallons of water that you just don't even have to touch uh, while it's running through this process. So that's half my boil time. That takes me from 10 hours to 5 hours, and uh, that would be... That would be easy to do with just two ROs. So you got twenty dollars per membrane and ten dollars per um, per tubing. Uh, so that's sixty bucks plus a hundred bucks on a pump. So you're maybe another twenty dollars in miscellaneous things. That puts you between a hundred and eighty. That puts you what about hundred eighty to two hundred dollars in RO stuff, and you're saving five to ten hours I mean depending on how much syrup you're, or sap you're doing it can save you significant time so put some dollar value around your time and uh, it it the math starts to work real quick at least for me it does we've got our pre warmer over here going and hopefully to boil some but this sap's been cold uh, it's been really cold today you know I started this video this morning of it being cold look at you can see I don't know how well you can see this but this was water that went through but it's starting to ice over just sitting out here um, I hate that we've got our Welcome pick to Burgess Farms East over here Burgess Farms East Paul and I haven't made a video since freshman year of high school Mr. Victor Berger's English class I think at the time we were selling stink away deodorant but uh, today we're making syrup so welcome got the whole setup here BFE syrup. That's right. Burgess Farms East with our nice windbreak wind table. Picnic table windbreak. Some people use a sugar shack, but uh, we don't have that set up yet. <laughs> you can see that they, there's just uh, This is a pretty common method. Um, you know, especially in the backyard community. I, I don't consider myself not a backyarder. I just happen to buy and spend a lot of money to to kind of do the same thing um, doesn't mean one's better than the other one's a little faster than the other <clears throat> but you know not everybody thinks they need to make 10 gallons of syrup a year I wish I was one of those people sometimes well if you don't have the uh, the trees to get the sap you know, <laughs> make 10 gallons so I've only got about a, a dozen or so sugar maples that we're pulling off, but I did get some extra sap from a friend of mine this year, so probably doing what 
90 gallons of sap since yesterday by the time we're all done. Yeah, we've Probably done a lot of sap. Maybe now we let this run all night too. We filled these up, stoked it with a fire. I checked it a few times just so it wouldn't burn anything. And um, that helped just kind of letting it be passive, uh, passive boil off. But you can definitely see like, we've got a good boil going in both of these. I think somebody will probably comment it needs to be lower in the pan and boiling harder, but um, I, I, if I was boiling on a different system that I was really comfortable with, maybe so. First time on this, I don't, I don't think that we'd want to overboil. Uh, it's too, e you can see a little bit of dark spot. It's too easy to get, you know, a scorch pan until you're really comfortable with your setup and how you can how you can get it to boil and know know what you need to do uh, to transfer and to keep from getting pan scorched. So a little bit deeper of a pan I don't think matters. Um, maybe a little bit of slow down in the boil off rate but not enough to, to care I don't think. You might go from like three and a half gallons to three gallons boil off or something in one of these pans. For each one of them i i think it's i think this is actually well i've read a lot of people boiling very similar to this getting one gallon per hour and uh we're we're much faster than that we've got a little bit of near sap here gallon or maybe five quarts in there it's got a ways to go to boil down but uh you can see it it's a little thin we'll get it there Okay, so we don't talk about this much, but there's, and I don't finish this way very often, uh, so this is more kind of uh, backyard, smaller batch finishing. Um, well, I finish this way, I, I just, I use uh, kind of a different process, but there's three things, kind of key indicators uh, when your syrup's done. One is temperature. So you'll, you'll read, and everyone will tell you, seven degrees above boiling. So roughly uh, 219, uh, give or take a degree, depending on the day, um, and barometric pressure. Uh, two is uh, a good indicator is the actual boil, and I'll show you that here in a second. And three is how um, it, sh it comes off of a spoon. Uh, to give you an indicator so as this will start to drip slower it gets wider and you get about an inch uh, drip here if I can get one here in a second I'll try to show that um, the last way or the telltale is refractometer this will tell us or a hydrometer will tell us the percentage of sugar so we're really close here on uh, Okay, yep. So our our 219 just hit, although we're foaming up here a little bit. And it dropped the temperature down when that foamed up. But here, we're gonna try to get this without a, see how this is gonna, this drip right here, uh, really be, there it is. About an inch across there and it really wants to hang. Do that one more time. Right there. That's our, that's a real good indicator. So I'm gonna hit this with the hydrometer, or the refractometer, and uh, see where we're at bricks wise. We should be really close at this point. So from pot into cone filter, I wouldn't pour. Yeah, it's been kind of pre-moistened. Uh, so it flows through a little bit easier. And it'll work through pretty slow down through there.
So here we are. Uh, finished bottling this yesterday. You can kind of see the color. Um, it's, it's it's a lot lighter than uh, you know a jar size changes the color. So this isn't a real thick jar, but a jar size changes the color of uh, syrup. So if you're looking at it through like a mason jar, it's more more light through. This is uh, probably like a maybe an amber uh, or a, a I don't think it's considered a light I think it's a little bit darker but it's uh it's got real good flavor um, it turned out real nice and and we're here today just finishing up the rest of this uh, pan this front pan is just water I'm trying to clean some of that pan up and the back is uh, really the remainder of about 20 gallons and um, there's not a whole lot in there maybe maybe three three gallons in there two gallons and uh, I'm expecting it to be only about 20 gallons of or 20 gallons I'm making three gallons of sap into 20 gallons of syrup no about a half a gallon of syrup and then we're gonna work on kind of cleaning that pan up so I've just been sitting here talking with John and I've been slowly stirring this and and uh, Actually, I think I've got most of this down to syrup, and so I wanted to show because I kind of got a bit of better of a view of it today. See how that is uh, sheeting off of there? That's syrup. That's how if you're going to do an indicator. See that big long? It's starting to sheet off of that. That's how I know we've got syrup in this pan and it's all syrup so we're gonna pull this and flood the pan so that's uh well that's all the sap that we've actually have to boil through and uh we got a little bit of syrup here to finish but i was pretty happy to be able to come out here and share my terrible hair day today uh, but share kind of this hobby uh, with some friends um have a good time doing it i thank john and jessica for giving me the opportunity to come out and spend some time with them and their hospitality was extremely nice and hey I got to make some syrup in New Jersey so I think John and I talked about creating a little badge system we're gonna go ahead and do that I think places to make syrup but that's uh, that's maple syrup in in New Jersey it's a lot warmer today so the BS is no longer about being cold um, thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up. If you like what we're doing, comment down below. Uh, subscribe to us. Follow us on social media. We'll appreciate it. Uh, share it with your friends. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks.